they were fine when decent people sleep and the political terrorists and tyrants struck. And when they were detained, they were subjected to all kinds of mental and even physical torture. This is not only unique for the 1963 batch, it was also practiced in many other batches of detention, 1972 and as late as 1987, the Jo Run and her group of so-called Marxist detainees were subjected to physical and mental and physical torture. Ms. Jo Run is here. I hope she will come up and educate to her how her back had been tortured. Physically, we are women lawyers and the women lawyers can be subjected to torture. Now when these women lawyers came out and issue a statement to describe how they have been tortured. They were again retained and compelled to withdraw the accusation. Now what type of rule of law is there when the accuser can be punished by the accused, that's the government, and compelled to withdraw the accusation? It's a no rule of law of justice turned upside down. Now this is a situation that even the law of society dare not utter a word of protest. It was so important after what they have done to the Law Society in 1987. Okay. Now, Mosukai has written a very good article on the Operation Coastal. In, in that, he has revealed a lot of declassified British archives documents showing how the British and Lee Kuan Yew conspired and uh, collaborated to, put political, uh, to crush the opposition before the 1963 general elections. The whole aim of this merger was to crush the opposition before the 1963 elections. And today, the PAP is standing on high moral ground, demanding human rights in other countries, even demanding the release of the two detainees in Myanmar. What precisely on what moral grounds are still standing to have this demand? In examining their past records, they are standing on a pedestal that is leaking with worms and worms. Let them repent first their own this no record of human rights. And then we may have the moral right to cast expressions on other people's lack of moral or of human rights. Uh, Musukai has also written the last chapter of this book about the future of socialism. Many of you may wonder what is the relevance of socialism in this era. Uh, after 50 years when the club has formed, the socialist movement all over the world has suffered a lot of setbacks, even defeats, and some wonder whether we are still relevant. The recent economic crisis, the recent financial crisis, has once again exploded the corruption and the immorality of the capitalist system. And we feel that human beings should deserve something better than a system that is generated by greed and by torture. Now, some of you may have heard that when you are young, you are idealistic, and you are old, you are realistic. Now, this is the kind of garbage statement used by those who have either lost their ideals or have sold their ideals for self interest. Each should not wither one's ideals or convictions. If anything, it should only consolidate and make it more resolute. If age has anything to do with it, it is only by way of expression and application of these ideals and convictions, having experience from the benefit, we have the benefit of our youthful experiences. Uh, life without convictions, without idealism, is a mere meaningless existence. And I'm sure most of you will agree that as human beings, you are worthy of a life much more meaningful than just that. 